What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we did get the gap up and run as the bulls are doing everything they need to do to start reversing the bear trend. With the bear trap likely complete, what are we expecting to see from here? First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So today in SPY we were up 1.91% and we did get the bullish gap up and run closing at the high of the day and we close back above that positively sloping 20 simple moving average. So right now it's a very obvious risk reward setup to stay long while SPY is above 380, and then you can get a lot more risk off if we do break down below that support. This is a very bullish setup of higher lows, and now we just need to get the bullish breakout of the higher high, and then we will officially have the bull trend. So we are very close to having a bull trend, which means we are going to lose the downtrend, and we're going to see some type of sustainable bull rally in the near term. It doesn't guarantee the bear market is over. We could still make a lower high and then continue lower in the rest of the year. But right now it looks like the bear trend is ending and the bulls are doing everything they need to do to get the bull trend. So the next bull breakout in SPY will be that breakout above 390. And then we should have no trouble filling the gap at 401, which means we're going to see short squeezes, which should give us enough fuel to power all the way back up to about SPY 418 to 420. So keep in mind, this is a bear trap. So there's going to be a lot of fuel to push higher because there will be people getting short squeezed. And that is why we did close near the high of the day, because there are some bears already giving up, retreating to the next resistance higher. So if you feel like you've been bear trapped, this is your chance to identify it early in the trend, because as long as SPY is above 380, we are likely going to trend higher. So do not overcomplicate it. It is that simple. You can see the 20 simple moving average is positively sloping and it was used as support today. So everything is looking bullish in the short term. We just need one more confirmation, which will be that breakout above 390. If we break down below 380, it's still possible we are going for that next leg lower to 350. But right now it just looks more bullish than bearish. So that's what I'm seeing. And we do see very nice volume on this recent bounce. So there was clearly lots of buying going on. And that is why we have gone absolutely nowhere in two months. That's an accumulation phase of big money buying slowly, so it's not obvious. And this is why you're going to see the next rally be very impulsive because the sellers are going to dry up and we've already seen the buyers stepping in. So we are likely going to get some type of rally off of this recent price action. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were up 1.81%. And again, we gapped up in closing to the high of the day in the tech sector. And if you've been following along with any of my updates, I've been telling you the tech sector had the bull breakout and the successful retest and today only confirmed that the retest was successful, with the price action closing back over the 20 simple moving average, which has a positive slope for three days in a row, which means the bulls are officially ready to go battle the big bear, and they are coming at this bear guns hot with a huge army of bulls to push through that resistance at 299. So I'm actually looking for the cues to blast through that gap and come all the way back up to about 315 and possibly even all the way up to about 330, but we'll cross that bridge when we get over 297, which will be the next bullish breakout. On the triple cues, you're staying bullish as long as we're above 287, so don't overcomplicate it. As long as the triple cues are above 287, we are going to continue to push higher. If for some reason we break down below this support at 287 and start breaking the trend line, then we could go down to retest the low right around 269. But right now, everything is pointing towards bullish in the short term, so we're likely going to continue to push higher and finally go battle the big bad bear that's just been waiting up there around that 50 EMA. On the Dow Jones, we were up over 2% today, and just like SPY and the triple Qs, we gapped up and closed at the high of the day, breaking back above that resistance, and you can clearly see we have that positively sloping 20 simple moving average. So all of the indices are looking bullish in the short term and the bull breakout for the Dow is just a stick throw away from 314. So once we get over 314, we'll likely go close the gap at 323 and possibly even push to as high as 333. So as you can tell, everything is looking bullish in the short term and in the Dow Jones, the critical support is right around 309 to 310. If we break through that support, look for the gap fill at 307 and possibly a retest of the low right around 301. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were also up over 2%. And again, we did see a high of the day close back over a positively sloping 20 simple moving average. The next critical breakout in IWM will be the close above 175 and then getting back over about 179 to go close the gap at 183.5. You can see support is holding up and we never actually close below the support trend line. So we do have these higher lows building up so once we get that higher high, we will have the bull trend and it will be confirmed that we will be going for that next leg higher. If at any point we break down below 170, get a lot more cautious for the retest of the low at 164 or that next leg low at 156. 
But again, everything is looking bullish in the short term. On the RK ETF, we are up 2.34% as RK also bounced off support around that support trend line at $42. And we did close back over the positively sloping 20 simple moving average. And we're very close to attempting the bull breakout above 47. It does look like the ARK ETF could have had a lot of accumulation over the last few months. So it would not surprise me in the slightest if we do get the bullish breakout above 47 to see a very impulsive bull rally. So as you can tell, things are looking more rosy for the bulls in the short term. But if ARK does lose support at 42, it is possible we could still be heading lower. So get cautious below 42 for that retest of 36.5. And the next leg lower would be at 33.7. In the VIX, we got absolutely crushed today, going down 8.29%, with the VIX breaking down below the support trend line and coming back down to the support level of 24. Remember, VIX closing below 24 will be a bullish breakout. So I do expect to see the VIX closing below 24 as this bull rally continues. And that should give the bull rally momentum as the VIX is getting crushed back down towards 20 to break out through that resistance. The bears may try to bounce the VIX off 24 in the short term, but don't be alarmed as long as the VIX is staying below about 27, it is likely just going to be a little spurt of volatility. If the VIX starts spiking above 28 and getting back above 30, then you can get more cautious for that bear market next leg lower. But right now you can clearly see the VIX has been getting absolutely crushed, which is a bullish signal that we are going higher. On Bitcoin, we're currently up 2.4% as Bitcoin's back up to 21,000 and back over the 20 simple moving average. But we have gone absolutely nowhere and we are still ping-ponging between support at 19,000 and resistance right around 22,000. The bull breakout is above 22,000 for a retest of 25,000 and then 28,000. And the bear breakdown will be a breakdown below 19,000, which means we should go the full measured move lower to about 16,000 or the price target at 12,000. Get more bullish above 22,000 and more bearish below 18,000. But overall, it does look like Bitcoin should be putting in a bottom relatively soon. So the lowest I think Bitcoin would go would be this 12,000 point, even though we may not actually reach 12,000 if we do find strong support at 16,000. On Nvidia stock, we were up 2.54% and Nvidia did get the bullish breakout closing above 156 and back over the 20 simple moving average. So we are looking like we have the confirmed bull breakout so we could start to get a bull trend from here. We have the higher low, we just need the higher high above about 159 to 161. So continue to stay bullish as long as we are above about 154. If at any point we break down below 150, get a lot more cautious because we could be coming back down to 145 or making that next leg lower at 130 or 125. But in the short term, we do look like we finally reached the bottom and we're going to start rallying back up to close that gap at 180. On Tesla stock, we were up 0.74% as Tesla continues to close back over $700 but has not yet had the bullish breakout above 745. Above 745 will likely see Tesla looking full bull because we have all of these higher lows and that will be the higher high and that means we will have the bull trend. Above the bull breakout, we still need to clear that previous high of resistance at 775 and then we should go full bull in Tesla stock once we see that breakout. If at any point we lose support at 700, look for a retest of the low, which is now right around 660. And if we do break down below the wedge to the downside, that will be bearish, which means we could be going down for the next leg at 571, even though we will have strong support right around 620. On Apple stock, we're up 1.15% as Apple continues to push higher. And if you've been paying attention, you know Apple is one of my leading indicators on why I thought that we were seeing a bear trap and that we were going higher. Apple is now back to the neckline at 150, so it's either going to do an inverse head and shoulders and build out the right shoulder before heading higher, or it's so bullish it's going to blast right through and go straight to 156 to 157. It does look like it has enough bullish momentum to push right through 150. So even though we do have resistance around here, there is no guarantee that we have to reject from it. We could blast right through it. You could see the bull trend is very clear in Apple stock with the higher low and the higher high and all of the moving averages starting to shift to trend higher. With a market moving stock like Apple, I would not be getting bearish while Apple is looking this bullish. Critical support now is going to be right around 146. And if we break down below 146, we just need to hold this support trend line right around 140. The financial sector was up 3.38% after a gap up and run after more bank earnings coming pre-market. So that is a bullish sign and we're back over the 20 simple moving average. So we could start to bounce off of this triple bottom look and then go close that gap above. And this is a very bullish look as long as we are above this support at 30.8. The industrial sector was up 1.57%, but still not closing above that 20 simple moving average. So you can get a lot more bullish if we can start breaking above some of this upside resistance. The healthcare sector was up 2.41% after that successful retest of support. And now we're back above the 50 EMA and all of the other moving averages. So we are very likely building out this right shoulder before we break out and start trending higher. 
The energy sector was up 1.63%, bouncing off of that support right around 66, and you could see the Bollinger Bands are getting very tight and very squeezed, but we're still in a very strong bear trend. I don't think the energy sector is ready to go higher just yet, but if we do break out above $70, you can get a lot more bullish. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, as you can tell, this was very clearly a very bullish week because we did see a lot of buyers of the dip on increasing volume. So if you are ignoring these bullish signs that the bear trend is weakening and the bulls are starting to strengthen, you are going to get bear trapped and you are going to lose a lot of money trying to short strength. This is bullish price action, even though it's not obvious if you're just waiting for the obvious breakouts, but by then you're already going to miss a lot of the move and you're very close to great risk reward setups. Like I continue to tell you, use SPY 380 and as long as we are above 380, you need to stay on the bull, or at least that is my opinion of how I view this chart. So get ready for the next bullish breakout as this momentum is likely going to carry over into next week. And remember, this is still a volatile market, which means we are not out of the woods yet, which means we still need to see confirmation with that higher high, but things are looking very good in the short term. And we clearly see the tech sector breakout leading the way higher, which every bull market starts with the tech sector leading higher. Keep in mind that every bottom is on the worst news and you never reach a bottom with good news. So even though it does look very bleak out there, you have to follow the chart. And right now the chart is starting to show a lot of bullish signals. Also, don't forget that I do have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm-driven trade alert service that only trades the ETF TQQ and sends you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. Even in the bear market of 2008, Bank beat the market and had a very positive return. If you're looking for more information or want to subscribe, you can click on the link in the description of this video. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I do intraday updates and analysis and bring new trade ideas to you weekly. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, you can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link below. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.